Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Ruskowitz. I'm an optometrist here at the Eye Institute of Sellis University, PCO. Three days a week, I'm in my own practice. Uh, we're very fortunate, it's busy. We have two optometrists and two ophthalmologists on staff. As all of us know, with third-party reimbursements uh, being cut or kept at the same level for practically decades, uh, examining patients, you have to be not only quick, but you have to be extremely accurate. So what we're going to talk about today is pupil testing. And all of us know that missing a pupil defect can have devastating consequences for the patient. So Golden Ophthalmics has developed this instrument. It's called the Accurate Pupil Tester, APT. And with this, you're able to test pupils not only more accurately and efficiently, but with a higher level of confidence than you could ever get with a handheld illumination site. And especially if you are a technician or you use technicians in your office, it helps to standardize it. So now, before we get started, uh, there's a couple of things I would like to show you. Uh, the first is, there is a lens holder in the back of the instrument. And for those of us that are presbyopic, you can insert a lens to help you see uh, the pupils much more clearly and also help with the magnification. So for myself, I use a plus 250. I know you're thinking to yourself, he's much younger than that and doesn't need a plus 250, but I do. And uh, you can play with different lenses that's going to give you uh, your best view of the pupils while you're doing the test. Now, the next thing you want to do is make sure that the instrument is set here with this level, lever at the infinity setting. Next, you want to make sure this knob is set on the number one. This is where you'll always start if you're going to measure pupil size first. And for the first pupil measurement, you're going to leave the lights on in the examination room. Uh, and this here is the on-off uh, switch. Be sure to turn that on, obviously. The next thing you want to do just before you measure the patient's pupil size is to set each one of these at 30 for the left eye and the right eye, and you'll see that screen right there. And set the slider at 30. That's just going to help improve your accuracy when you do the math and subtract some numbers to make sure you don't make a mistake. So once both of these are set at 30, the instrument is turned on, the lights are kept on, and we're going to measure the pupil size of our patient here, Elliot. We're going to move the right eye to, uh, for the measuring, the black line to the nasal aspect of the pupil, towards the nose. And don't use the slider to do that, just simply move the entire instrument. Once that's set on the nasal aspect, then you'll move the slider over till it's the temporal aspect of the pupil towards the ears. And we're going to do the same thing for the left eye. Move the instrument till it is on the nasal aspect. There we are. And then just simply move that over till we're at the temporal aspect. And then simply look and subtract 30 from what you see in the two screens here. That is going to be the pupil size under bright illumination. Now we're going to do that with the lights off. So you as the tester would turn the lights off in the examination room. Uh, for videotaping purposes, we're not going to do this because all you would do is see a grainy image of me and hear my voice. So we're going to leave the lights on. You will turn the lights off. So the first test is the direct illumination test. So again, have the patient hold the instrument so that your hands are free. And as you're looking in, look at the right eye and click it over to number two and that will start the testing mode 
and it's all automatic. So the first test that is done is the direct illumination test. And what you're doing with the direct illumination test is it's going to flash the light twice at the right eye first and then twice at the second eye and you're measuring how briskly the pupil responds. And so what you're going to do is record that response on a 0 to 4 scale. And as you can see here, 0 is no constriction with 4 being a very brisk response like you'd see in a young person. So we've done the direct testing. Now we're going to move on to the next test and that is the one second flashing or swinging flashlight test. Uh, and this is one of the strengths of this instrument. It is timed exactly for one second and then it's instantly onto the left eye. And what you're doing here is judging the constriction between the two eyes. So the light is flashed for one second, see how that pupil constricts and then Compare that to the left eye and see how quickly and briskly the left eye responds to that one second light. And it'll repeat that cycle twice. And hopefully both pupils are the same. The next instrument or the next test will be the three second flashing uh, light. That swinging flashlight test is again exactly three seconds and then instantly onto the next eye and then it'll repeat that cycle again. Uh, and that completes the pupil testing. Thank you, Elliot. Now, there's one additional test that's going to be rarely ever used and that is when you're doing the first test of direct illumination and you see almost no or no pupil constriction. So you want to do one additional test and for that you're going to move this lever, lever from infinity to the near setting. So you go back to here. Again, you're asking the patient to look at the fixation light at the back of the instrument and as they're looking, just simply move the lever over to the near setting and that's going to force the patient to accommodate and converge and you're going to see how much constriction you get with that compared to the direct illumination. But again, that test is rarely ever performed. Now, a couple of hints I want to give you for uh, use of the instrument. One is, always remember to turn it off, and I'm going to repeat that, remember to turn it off uh, when you're finished. Number two hint is, if you're new to pupil testing, what you might want to do is the manual mode. So we're going to talk about how to use the manual mode. So if you're in mode number two, automatic cycle, and let's say direct response, you're not certain what you're seeing, you can just simply click over to number three and it will keep repeating the direct response test till you're comfortable with your findings. Go back to automatic mode and it'll pick up where it left off and that'll be going to the one second test. If you're on the one second test and you're not quite certain what you're seeing, go to click stop number four and that will keep repeating the one second swinging flashlight test. And once you're comfortable with your findings, you can go back to the automatic mode. And again, if it's the final test, the three second swinging flashlight test, and you're not certain what you're seeing, just click it down to number five and it'll keep repeating that test. Now, if you're new to pupil testing or new to the instrument, I suggest the first patients that you're doing, you do it in manual mode. So you simply, after you've measured the pupil size on number one setting, you go to, in, uh, you'll always measure the pupil in bright and dim illumination. Then you'll move on to setting number three 
and it'll keep repeating the direct pupil test. And let me show you how we would do that. So we start out with the direct pupil testing, and it'll keep doing that till I'm comfortable with what I'm seeing. I simply reach up, click it one more time, and it'll go on to the one second test. And once I'm comfortable with that, I reach up, move it over one more click stop to number five, and it'll keep repeating the three second swinging flashlight test till I'm comfortable with my findings. So in a sense, it slows down the test. Once you become comfortable with that, you can just basically go to number two and it will very quickly and accurately measure the pupils for any type of defect much better than you can do with a handheld device. Again, remember to turn it off when you're done. And finally, there's a number of good videos on YouTube if you're not familiar with pupil testing and it can show you what uh, you would anticipate to see. Uh, we're going to show you some links to a couple of them and uh, if you're not familiar check them out. They're all relatively short. They take three to four minutes. Thank you for your attention and enjoy this instrument. Now, I'm going to show you how to record pupil findings. You'll see that on the top, this is how it's usually given on paper. Many offices today use electronic records, so you may wish to uh, look at how it's recorded on your uh, electronic record system. But the Nomenclature for PERLA is pupils equal round reactive to light. And if you do the test where you move it from infinity to near, uh, that's the accommodative part. And you would record the accommodative finding very simple, simply on the same system, the zero to four system, with zero again no movement and four being extremely brisk. The next set of letters stand for relative afferent pupillary defect and this refers to the one second and three second test if the pupils are different from each other and how they constrict or for the three second test how they release then you're going to put a plus sign there. For Elliot we can see that under uh, bright light normal illumination his pupil sizes were three so that when I looked at the instrument, it, I had slid it over from 30 to 33. Uh, after, moving, after moving it up for both pupils, I set it back to 30, and in dim illumination, when I turn the lights off, uh, I do the same thing. I move it to the nasal aspect of the pupil, slide it over, and it was 36 for each eye. They were both round. Uh, here is a picture of a pupil that isn't round. Uh, this is a lady who had an injury. Uh, and it's her eye that you would record if it's a right eye above or left eye, that it's oval shaped, teardrop shaped, D shaped, whatever shape that you're seeing. The R here stands for reactive. Uh, Elliot's pupils were brisk, so we put a three above and beyond above and below. Uh, if we had to do the test, we would record those numbers uh, for the uh, accommodation. So typically you've got a zero or a one here and you want to see if for the accommodative test whether the pupils constricted more than they did for the uh, direct light test. Elliot's two pupils behaved identically for the one and three second test. If they don't, rather than a negative sign, you would put a plus sign. And that's how they are uh, recorded. I just want you to see what it's going to look like in the instrument when you're doing the test. So when I measured the pupil sizes, 
I moved the instrument till it was at the exact nasal aspect of the right pupil and then I slid it over and measured that in the uh, temporal or towards the ear uh, aspect of the pupil. And that difference between the two represents the pupil size in bright illumination. We turn the light off and we simply repeat the test again where we put it on the smaller pupil or the larger pupil uh, because it's dim illumination and simply slide it over on the right, slide it over on the left and each time we start the instrument off at 30, the difference between 30 and what you're measuring is the pupil size.